In this video, I'll explain what is dimensional modeling and let's look at how Apple would do it. Before jumping into dimensional modeling, you should be clear about two things. They are dimensions and facts. I touched upon this a little bit in my last video, but let me explain it once again. Dimension gives descriptive characteristics of data. Fact gives measures or simply facts. These are usually numeric in nature. In this short video, I can't design an entire dimensional model for all Apple products. Instead, let's just take an example of Apple Watch. Let's head on to Apple's website and check out their watch. Okay, now once we are here, we need to look out for dimensions and facts about this watch. The first dimension which we can think of is size of the watch. That's 40 mm and 44 mm. And then case of the watch, aluminum, stainless steel, titanium, and then band of the watch that's solo loop brided solo loop sport band sport loop leather stainless steel so when i buy this watch the data about the sale would be called a fact so now if i if i want to segregate dimensions and facts related to apple watch the dimensions would be color size addition type of band etc facts would be sale price quantity dimensional modeling is done for two reasons one simplicity dimensional modeling is built for ease of understanding we separate models for each business process i mean we create different models for sales department and marketing department and for technology department this is done because each department's business questions would be different and the way they aggregate the data would be different second is performance Dimensional modeling enhances the performance of data retrieval. Usually, in data warehouse, you deal with terabytes and petabytes of data. The very first model which you can make from connecting dimensions and facts is called star schema. So let's look at how we build a star schema with the information we just gathered. So here, sales fact is at the center. Sales fact has the relationship to all the dimensions around it and it also has quantitative information like total quantity and total sale price. Each of the characteristics of the watch is converted into one dimension. We have a watch dimension at the top. This watch dimension has its make, model, type and price. And we have color dimension to the left. This has color ID and the color name. We have size dimension to the right, which has size ID, screen size and thickness. And at the bottom, we have band dimension which has band ID, band type, and band color. If you observe, each of the IDs from the dimensions are present in the fact. This is a typical example of star schema. There is another variant of star schema, which is called snowflake schema. It's nothing but an extension of star schema. So let's look at the watch dimension. In the watch dimension, we have the model description. And we know there are multiple models of Apple Watch. That is, we have Nike edition, we have Hermes edition, we have SE. This can be put into another dimension called model dimension. And then you connect the watch dimensions model via model ID. In the model dimension, I have the model ID, model name, and partner information. So this is a typical example example of snowflake schema. So this is how Apple would do its dimensional modeling. They would do it in a much deeper way, but just for our understanding purpose, I took few elements of it and then did the model. I hope this video was informational and please let me know if you like the video by dropping a comment. Thank you.